the, this humming sound that you hear from the bees, the way it sounds to me, is like if I was walking through woods or on a trail and there was a waterfall way off in the distance, you could hear that kind of a hum. That, that's what it sounds like to me. It's just, I, I just love it. coming to the St. Paul Farmer's Market? I'm about uh, 12 or 13 years now. 12 or 13 years? Yeah. So now we've seen you down here. We've seen you with the bee hat on. Can we get out there and see your apiary? Yeah, sure. I'd be glad to have you come out. Uh, Thursday's on our right apiary? Oh, perfect. <laughs> Which means Dale from Wolf Honey Farm has invited us to come out and learn about the bees. I see him right over there. Let's go. Hey, Emily. Good Hi. to see you. Hi, Dale. Glad you can make it out. Thank, make it out. thank you. Are, you. are you going to show us the bees? I, I'd be glad to show you the bees, but uh, I should probably have you put one of these suits on first. Oh, okay. like I'm wearing armor. <laughs> so Dale, what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing a bunch of bees at work. Where is the entrance to the hive? Uh, Emily, it's, it's right on, on this side, right there in front where all the oh. bees are going in and out. Oh, I see. And there's probably between 50 and 60,000 bees in that hive. And I don't see hardly any pollen, so they're bringing in a lot of nectar today, which is, which is a good day. How far away are the flowers? Bees can smell up to seven miles and they can fly a long ways, but, but we try to make them more efficient so the bees don't have to fly so far. But there's a lot of, just, just along the roadside here, just uh, uh, 150 yards from here, there's, there's a lot of stuff, and, and there's alfalfa fields just right, right beyond these trees right here, a lot of alfalfa, clover fields, so they, they got pretty close. And then, and then this way, just south of here a little bit, there's a, a lot of basswood trees that they've been working on there the last week. You can see there's, on that entrance there, there's a lot of them just uh, hanging onto the bottom board, just fanning their wings. Uh -huh. and, and what they're doing is pushing air into the hive, goes all, all the way up to the hive, around and back down, and that evaporates the moisture out of the nectar. They, they do that 24 hours a day. If I was to hold a match out there, there there's enough airflow that, that it would blow the match out. It seems like as, as, as we're longer we're here, there, there's more and more bees that are lining up and doing fanning. See all these bees in, in, in the air here, they're just all coming in with, with a load, load of nectar to put into the hive. There's other bees that are in there that, that are guard. Guard bees are pretty smart. If another bee, if a bee from another hive comes in there and, and they know it's another strange bee, but if it's a carrying a load of pollen or a load of nectar, they, they welcome it, come on in. Oh, really? Yeah, right. They're smart. And then what do they do? Do they kill well, it when they it's in? Well, after they unload it, then you're, you're free to go. Oh. <laughs> do they do that sometimes? Bees get confused and they go and they deliver uh, what, what, the what goods? What can happen? On, on windy days, that can happen. The wind's blowing and, and they're coming in. And bees are loaded down. They're, they're, they're kind of clumsy flyers. And they'll come in and, and, and mm -hmm. like these hives are only about a foot apart. The wind could, could a gust, gust of wind could push it and it could land in front of the other hive, and, and he'd go running right in. And, and like I say, if he's loaded down, the, the bees will welcome him right in. If he's not loaded down, they'll, they'll get on him and chase him out. There's a bee calling on me. Oh, wow. See, they're, they're, they're real docile. They, and, and I tell people, you know, if, if you're sitting in your yard or something and a bee lands on you, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't get all excited because uh, most of the time bees are just tired. They're, yeah. they're, they're fat, they're short. Uh, aerodynamically, they're, they're not supposed to be able to fly because they're too short. So what is that can looking thing? <laughs> that, 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 that's called a smoker. And I'll show you what we use that for. Right now, uh, I got a nice cool smoke in there. And the first thing when you come up to a hive to, to keep them calm down, you take and, and, and give a little shot right at the entrance of the hive and that calms them down. And we'll take the cover off. What, what is the smoke actually? The, the, the smoke, I'll give them a couple of little shots of smoke 
and the smoke, see every, every queen gives off a, a, a pheromone, a scent, and the smoke neutralizes that scent so that the, the bees aren't alarmed by when we open it up. And I'm gonna show you what, what they've been doing in there. And uh, this is some uh, comb honey, and they're really filling it out nice. Wow. Wow. The bees are working on there. That is and, and you can see how docile they are. They, they don't get excited. Uh, these are cells that are already filled up. And these are with, with honey, and they put a cap over the top to, to keep the honey in there, uh, keep any moisture from getting back in there. And these are cells that, that they're filling, and these are partially filled yet. And what they do is they'll, they'll bring nectar in, and when they bring the nectar in, it, it, it's almost like Kool-Aid. It, it's 50% moisture. And so they, they distribute that in these cells. And then we, we talked about those, those fanning bees down in front. Uh -huh. They're forcing air between these, these frames, and that's pulling the moisture out of the, out of the nectar. And, and they keep pulling the, the moisture out until they get it down to about 17%. And then they keep adding to it. When it gets to 17%, they start closing it. This one here is the partially closed cells. And uh, then when they close it all up, that's preserved. And, and honey, it, it's down to the right moisture content where it isn't going to spoil. Is this also where they put the larvae, the oh, no. eggs? No, nope. the, the larvae is down in the bottom box, way down below. Uh, the, the, the top boxes are, str are strictly for the, for the honey. What's the best honey you've ever tasted? Uh, the, the stuff that's in there right now, basswood. Really? Yeah, I love it. Can you just tell by looking at the honey what kind of flower source they've been? No, you gotta taste it. You gotta taste it? Yeah. There's a lot of weight there? Yeah, that's heavy. Yeah. It's a whole lot of honey. Yeah, it is. All right, do you want, you want okay. something real, really neat? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, I got to have <laughs> one more. That's basswood. Oh, that's taste, so taste, good. Taste that little bit of a minty aftertaste. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's good. Honey is not just a sweetener. Honey is a food. It's carbohydrates, the proteins, the enzymes, totally good for you. And we, we have this honey right here that uh, we started really pushing a few years ago. And this, I call it extra virgin honey. And this is honey that hasn't been heated or filtered. So it, it's full of enzymes. And especially for people that have allergy problems, uh, uh, digestive problems, it is super good. And ever since I've been in this business, I've done a lot of reading, and I don't believe that honey in this country is really sold for what it is, honey and, honey and all the stuff that goes along with it. So I do a lot of reading, and, and, and I try to come up with new things uh, every, every periodically to enhance the honey. And how many years have you been in business? I've been in the honey business for the, over 42 years. Wow. So a real expert. You've made a believer out of me. Well, thank you very much for well, showing us all this. Thanks for coming out. Glad to have you.